Hey guys, Peter here to do an album review. Today I'm here to tell you about the latest from Comeback Kid, Heavy Steps, out January 21st on Nuclear Blast. The album has 11 tracks, 32 minutes in length, and this is the band's 7 full length studio album. They are a Canadian hardcore punk band. And on this record, they created an album that forces you to put that seat belt on and white knuckle this thing all the way through. That is the style of intensity, the style of approach, the style of aggression, and then obviously the heaviness that comes with it that really makes up the soundscape and the overall design of this album. This is not a roller coaster ride. It's not a record that offers you to peel different layers in order for you to see what's under the hood. There's nothing under the hood. It's just a motor. Let's just freaking drive this thing all the way through. This album takes you from point A to point B in the shortest distance possible with as much aggression and intensity as it can hold. That is the overall design. What you see is what you get in. There's nothing else to it. Now, once you move into the soundscape, I felt like the album there offered perhaps two different versions of itself, sometimes coming together and sometimes working in complete uh, opposite directions. On one hand, the sound feels very penetrating, very melodic, very driven, thin at times, uh, adding intensity into it, but a different style of intensity, an intensity that pushes you forward, that cuts deep throughout the tracks, not necessarily intensity that brings aggression with it. On the other side, you have a little bit more of a chunky sound, thicker sound, more volume, and with more volume, you're normally gonna get more heaviness, and that's exactly the paradigm that exists within this record, that more melodic, intensive side, perhaps a little bit more introspective and then making its way outwards, and then on the other side, the more aggressive side, the more natural, the more brutal side, that is just straight to the point, and it doesn't hold back. Now, the interesting ability of bringing these two options together, if you will, is that it makes the album feel very cohesive and very balanced, because you start to define these parameters early on in the record and you start to see the patterns morphing and creating themselves ahead of you as you go from song to song. So the ingredients of the recipe are always there, but what you're cooking is completely different from track to track. This makes the album more engaging, more fluid, more connected and not repetitive at all. Never throughout this entire record you get to a song and you feel like you heard that track before or you feel like the nuances that the song is putting forward have been used and abused previously. This album feels fresh at every single turn while using a lot of the same elements consistently throughout the entire existence of the record. Now within that soundscape, there are definitely two elements that stand out to me. One is the drums, the other one is the guitars. The drums on the other, on one hand, I really feel like they added a little bit of shape and help create the foundation for this record. They really help balance out the album and they help create the necessarily platform for everything else that comes on top of it. What I would have liked to see a little bit different is a little bit more heaviness, a little bit more consistency from the drums. I'm not saying that the drums are not heavy on this album. There are moments where the drums pack a, a huge amount of power, they pack a huge amount of strength, but they're not consistent from that perspective. So there's a few songs where you feel like the drums are moving into the back seat and they're really jumping on, almost out of the picture in terms of the impact that they can have and how the song is driven or how the song comes across. I wanted the drums to be a little bit more consistent, a little bit more aggressive, with a little bit more power. It would give the whole album more substance. It would give more consistency of depth across every single song. You can still change how the guitars come across and how driven they can be, but at least the drums would offer a little bit more consistency, making the album feel even better together as one and not have this disparity of moments from song to song. On the other side, you have the guitars. I love the guitar sound on this record. Regardless if you get the melodic driven intensive side of the band or if you're gonna get the more clunky, chunky, groovy at times, thicker, heavier, aggressive side of the band. Both are phenomenally executed throughout the entire album. And having these two different approaches is really important because it makes the record feel more dynamic. It, it, it breathes in life into how the album comes across and in terms of how the album sounds. The interesting aspect is that it doesn't matter which way they went, the overall end result in terms of how you feel the overall sound that comes across stays very uniform. So behind the scenes, the sound is moving differently, but the end result stays very together. Uh, it, it gives balance and it, and it gives movement at the same exact time. So I really enjoy the guitar sound and to me it was definitely one of the elements that stayed fresh and, and really kept me engaged with the record from start all the way to the end. The vocals are also marked with consistency. Uh, you get that aggression, that intensity, that way of bringing everything that's been building up on the inside into the outside in a very direct kind of way. I wasn't expecting anything else. That's exactly how this band 
delivers their vocal lines and, and how they approach vocals in general. So this album stays close to home and it, it allows itself to be uh, a, a little bit better grounded because of it, because it's it's an element that you've gotten used to it that brings consistency, that brings a sense of uniformity across all 11 tracks, but it's always there in order to push the agenda, the agenda that the songs have in terms of the message that they carry. And I felt like on this album, in certain instances, the connection that the vocals had with the lyrics was very direct, it felt very organic, and that obviously has also a very positive impact in how you perceive these songs. Overall, the album doesn't want to break. This is a record that doesn't want to stop, it just wants to go. And the deeper you get into the album, the further you go down the line, the faster you get down this journey, down this road, the more shit you want to break up. You just feel like the intensity, the aggression, the overall levels of enjoyment start to increase and you start to give less about everything else around you and you just want to get into that mosh pit and vibe. This album has incredible songs that from a live setting are going to be outstanding. They capture the live essence of the band into the record and the songs that this album offers, they are all been made in a way that are going to work flawlessly in a live setting. A fun album, a balanced album, an album that I just wish was a little bit more on the heavier side and not as much driven as it is at times. As far as favorite songs are concerned, I want to start off with Face the Fire. The guitar opening on this track sets the mood and it lets the song go. It releases the track, it's off to the races. By the way, great bass line on this song. I really felt like the bass on this track did something that perhaps could have been done more consistently throughout the entire record, which is bridge the fact that the drums are a little bit in the back seat and the guitars are driving the experience. You need something to connect these two worlds, or otherwise the gap between them is going to be massive and the song is going to feel stretched out and it's going to lose a lot of its allure. On this track, I felt like they stretched them out as much as they could, but by putting the bass right in the middle and allowing the bass line to be noticeable, they brought those two worlds together and merged them, making the song feel a little bit more connected. And that is an important element for a track like this. The vocals on this song really add fuel to the fire, something that's true throughout the entire record, a song that's very catchy, and that's also something that's true throughout the entire record. This album is built of catchy, hooky songs. This one is no different. This one is very hooky, very catchy, musically and vocally. Next, we have Dead on the Fence. This is my favorite song on the album. I love this track. That one-liner, Dead on the Fence, you repeat it over and over again in the chorus, really makes this song stand out and makes this song really become an earworm. It's one of the heaviest, hookiest songs, but it's a, it's a heavy song that still has penetrating melodic guitar moments. So this is a track that really brings those two different sides that I was speaking about earlier together as one. And sometimes you get more of one, more of the other, and in the other times you're a little bit in between, merging both as one, allowing the track to have a lot of dynamic movements and stay very volatile, but stay very controlled at the same time. The drums on this track pack a little bit more volume and that's where you get a little bit more heaviness from it. The guitars are also a little bit thicker, a little bit bigger at times, but they gravitate into that more driven sound as well and then they come back to the heavier side. They have a little bit more to do, they have a little bit more to give. From a structural perspective, this is your prototypical hardcore track and the way it's constructed, the way it comes across, the way it packs volume, and the way that volume translates itself into heaviness and then you have that, like I said, that hooky, catchy chorus, really easy to remember, one-liner, and that becomes the calling card of the entire track. Last but not least, we have Shadow of Doubt. Uh, this is perhaps a little bit on the heavier side. So while Dead on the Fence is a little bit of a, a, a middle track that merges two worlds, and Face the Fire was definitely a more driven track, this one packs a, a big punch. This is definitely on the heavier side of the album and it's more consistently heavy from beginning all the way to the end. It's also built as an anthem. The way the song comes across has a live vibe to it. The way the vocals are put together uh, using backing vocals in order to give a sense of a choir, of a, of, a, of a chorus of voices coming at you. All of those elements add to that anthem vibe and obviously add to that live atmosphere that this song has really well uh, in, defined within its parameters. It's heavy, it's aggressive, it's intensive, has a little bit of everything, high octane track, musically and vocally, moves really well, really well designed, quick impact, it's a short track, 
but it delivers the message that it needs to deliver in within within that sound within that aggression within that intensity in that short moment of time when that burst really comes at you fast and furious and then it's gone i love this track i love how it's put together and i love that anthem vibe that it has this is it come back kid with heavy steps on january 21st on nuclear blast let me know your thoughts on the band on the singles use the comment section below i'll be reading those and getting back to you take care guys <laughs>